let's let's begin. Hmm. Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Dhyan or Chin Mudra, head, neck, shoulders, back in a straight line, eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Bhu Madhya. And at the Bhu Madhya, visualize the form of a brightly burning candle flame. And maintaining your awareness on that, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Oh, 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 oh. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavai Tejas Vinavaditamastu Ma Vedvishavai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Harium, but sir, each of your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, energizing the eyes, the brain, the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Harium, but sir, the monarch. So a very warm welcome to all the participants of the Satyam Yoga Conclave. We are in day two of the conclave. And today we are going to look at the next petal of life. And that is the adult age. The Gruhastha Ashrama. This is one of the most important and crucial stages of life. And we will be looking at what are the problem statements, what are the opportunities, what are the change challenges which come our way. And to discuss this, we have two very special participants. First, the first section of the adult, the young adult, that will be by Sumit Swami. No. And then the second part where you have gone through some turbulences and some challenges and you are facing, uh, you have made some achievements, but there are further issues which are there, problems which questions which are there, then we are able to know certain other aspects and to present those aspects, we have Ankit Saxena who will be joining us and sharing his views on the same. So let us begin with uh, Sumit. Sumit, would you like to start? Yes, yes, sure. 
सो नमस्ते सभी को और धन्यवाद स्वामी जी बहुत टू गिव मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी सो आई स्टार्ट विथ इंट्रोड्यूसिंग माई सेल्फ माई नेम इज सुमित स्वामी एंड करेंटली आई एम वर्किंग एट एन एनजीओ नेम सुविता सो वी वर्क विद द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र ऑन मैटर एंड चाइल्ड हेल्थ and uh, yeah before that so I, i uh, my educational background has been that i have done my masters uh, in economics and post that i have mostly been working uh, in in the social sector and uh, uh my basically journey uh, towards yoga or or my experience with yoga has uh, been recent uh, and not that fast uh so i uh, i'll i'll just give you a background of how i started my journey with with yoga and then i'll basically come to current uh, phase of my life so earlier i used to play cricket uh, professionally uh i think for mostly most of my life uh, or my young adulthood or teenage uh, i i used to play cricket professionally and uh, i played for uh, like straight or uh, maharashtra state in the in, in the age group but the later on in my life i developed a, a severe injury shoulder injury and because of that uh, i was not able to you know perform well and so my perform performance deteriorated and then uh, because i was so much focused in cricket i also had lost uh, focus on my academics and academics had taken a back seat and uh, you know i i also was very close to my father and he was also very supportive of me uh, being into cricket and it was his, his dream as well ek mulga hai but uh, it so happened that i i lost my father uh, at a very crucial stage when i was not doing well in cricket as well and i was going through injury and then uh, all of these things uh, happened suddenly and then i was uh, not being in touch with academics not performing well in cricket and not having my father kind of led me into very severe depression for a couple of years and it was like a very tough phase of my life and and i don't know but uh, at that time itself that like, yoga came into my life so i uh, somehow my sister got me uh, enrolled in some course where i learned some meditations and some pranayamas and then spiritual uh, knowledge i used to follow and then i think that brought in a lot of uh, transformation uh in me and basically the circumstances didn't change much but then how i faced or how i dealt with them uh uh changed uh, a lot and basically i have been able to deal with my life much much better and and since then i have been uh following spiritual path or uh, kind of following yogic knowledge or or uh, spiritual practices and basically that uh, gives me a lot of hope or courage and and definitely uh, want I, that gets me you know wanting to solve things or deal with my life more from this perspective and that has basically somehow got me in touch with swami ji through share my one of my colleagues and uh, that's how i am here uh, so yeah and currently um, i i am working in an ngo but then there are there been have been uh, uh, phases where because of peer pressure i have always been want, like wanting to work at corporates and a lot of my friends currently are uh, working uh, in 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 corporates and you know our life aspirations are kind of uh, are are led by these kind of uh, social norms that are uh, that that we see uh, in in uh, today's socio economic structure where everything is basically laid by uh, materialistic aspirations to have uh, you know possess certain things uh, itni salary honi chahiye you need to have certain social status uh, so yeah i would say that some of my personal aspirations are also uh, i would be lying if i say that i don't have any of those aspirations yeah i want to you know uh, earn as much that that keep my family stable and and have i help me lead a, a a stable life and apart from that i think being uh, uh, my experience with ngo sector also basically uh, my my makes me have these aspirations of basically having a, or 
working towards making a society which is stress free and you know more equal there is such high inequality in the society which is sustainable and all also building up a society basically which lives in harmony with uh, each other and uh, and also also uh, the nature apart from that maybe i i would always i was, have been striving and a lot of my friends are striving for to be better versions of ourselves whether it be physically emotionally or you know skill wise professionally or intellectually uh, and apart from that uh, over the past few years uh, since i have been on uh, i have been you know listening to or reading to spiritual scriptures and knowledge uh, i think my questions about uh, who am i or why am i here uh, have been increasing and i think i have a lot of hopes from uh, yoga that that it could basically provide answers to some of these questions because uh, over time i have been realized uh, uh, you know i am not just here to eat or to party or you know to earn money because i think that seems to be a very uh, superficial way uh, of living a life or or maybe i think there is uh, all this while i mean i have always felt that there is something lacking something lacking because everything that had that society had promised me ki 10th hone ke baad you know life would be good uske baad 12th karo 12th ek baar acche se karoge to ho jayega uh ye team mein selection ho jayega to life sahi ho jayegi job le lo fir sahi ho jayegi uh uske baad flat le lo sahi ho jayegi shaadi karo life set hai shaadi ke baad bachcha karo set hai but uh, after having some of these things uh abhi you know it doesn't feel complete or usme purna purna ta nahi lag rahi hai fir the society or people around me that they had made these promises ki ye hone ke baad aisa hoga uh, aisa shayad bahar se to laga hoga ki maine celebrate to kiya hoga job lag ke baad party to kari hogi but andar se wo kabhi bhi uh, ek purna ta ya completion ya kuch success ka mujhe anubhav nahi hua and that's why i think uh, i have a lot of hopes from this योगा के मार्ग से या स्पिरिचुअलिटी के मार्ग से दैट इट विल हेल्प मी गिव आंसर्स टू सम ऑफ दीज क्वेश्चंस तो ये एक लाइफ सिचुएशन में मैं अभी डील कर रहा हूँ कि आई हैव बीन वांटिंग टू फाइंड दीज आंसर्स वाइल आउटवर्डली आई हैव बीन वर्किंग टुवर्ड्स अदर थिंग्स एंड मे बी वर्किंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द सोशल नॉर्म्स बट अंदर दे इज दिस बैटल गोइंग ऑन कि क्या ये सब जो चल रहा है वो सही है कि नहीं है एंड आई डोंट सी देर देर बींग एनी अदर path apart from yoga that that could basically uh, provide me these answers then abhi abhi mera age hai 27 28 or uh, there is this second uh, aspect of my life jahan pe ki now everybody around me my family wants me to get married but then again wahan pe bhi uh, main bahut sare basically explore kar raha hu ki uh, shaadi karni chahiye nahi karni chahiye kya hota hai matlab gruha sastram exactly kya hota hai एंड uh, मेरे जैसे बहुत सारे दोस्त भी यही सेम फेज से गुजर रहे हैं जहाँ पे कि uh, अभी अभी लोगों ने करियर शुरू किया है एंड दे आर स्टिल एक्सप्लोरिंग अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स अबाउट देयर ओन सेल्स बट एट द सेम टाइम देयर इज प्रेशर फ्रॉम आउटसाइड दैट यू हैव टू यू नो गेट इन टू विद सम वन एंड आई थिंक यहाँ पे भी दो चीजें हैं जहाँ पे कि एक लाइक सोशल नॉम है जहाँ की तुम्हें शादी करनी है एंड देन अदर एक्सट्रीम पार्थ दैट यूथ करंटली आर डीलिंग विद इज you know there are so many dating apps or uh, casual relationships just uh, getting engaged in physical relationships so i think ye bahut uh, bada dilemma hai where currently mujhe dono mein hi uh, itna ras ya itni ruchi nahi uh, lag rahi kyunki uh, jaise hum life jee rahe hain wo bahut individualistic life hai ya mere vichar bahut uh, alag hai jo mere baaki ke ghar wale hai maybe shayad 10 20 saal pehle aisa nahi hota hoga ki you know whole family was a unit in itself but abhi unit maybe i am own self mein ek individual ho gaya hu because of the current socio economic structure jahan pe ki mere ghar mein hi hum char log alag alag jobs karte hain to charo ke alag income sources hai to agar hum chahe to hum sab akele reh sakte hain but while maybe uh, pehle aisa nahi hota hoga to ye ye mujhe samajh nahi aa raha hai ki maine shaadi uh, karni chahiye nahi karni chahiye aur mujhe baaki ke kuch log jo karte hain ki just a casual relationship wo bhi uh, is is not very attractive or jo uh, abhi mujhe samajh nahi aa raha hai to ye sare uh, situations se main abhi guzar raha hu so i think yeah yeah 
that's that's beautiful that is beautiful i think you have really very uh, succinctly in a very very nice manner expressed all those doubts which people undergo and uh, i feel that this is very crucial component which has to be addressed and uh, let us try and uh, you know address some of them obviously we cannot uh, address all the things but i will try and give you the basic outline how Ji. to think ahead ji what are the base so that yes. allows you to take a better decision yes yes thank you so much samir for coming in thank you samir ji yes for uh, everybody just to let you know that sumit at the moment is on a vacation with his family but he has uh, been uh, very enthusiastic and he has come in from his uh, holiday to join us for this so thank you so much sumit no thank you samir ji and i think yeah uh, very thankful for you to give me this opportunity i was i'm uh, very excited to you know hear from you on this and seem to be a very amazing platform to also hear uh, from others yeah thank you thank you so much now we'll request uh, ankit to uh, share his aspects and his uh, life journey and uh, to understand uh, another aspect of vrtasha ashram over to ankit Namo Narayan Swami Ji, thank you so much for uh, giving me the ability to share. Your voice is uh, not; we are not able to hear you very well. Is it better now? Much clearer. Okay. Namo Narayan Swami Ji, Namo Narayan okay. everyone. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, Swami Ji. Uh, my name is Ankit. Uh, I my age is forty. I live in Pune. Uh, I have it in my family, so I have my wife and I have two kids. uh one kid is uh, 12 years old uh, daughter and then another kid is a son he is 6 years old and i also live with my parents they live with me in the same house uh just to give some uh, background and you know my journey so far uh, and then i'll be sharing you know what kind of challenges i am facing right now so uh, typical uh, i i have lived i was brought in brown up in a kind of a tier 2 or tier 3 type ah. of hmm which is very near to bhopal which is the uh, capital of madhya pradesh so i was born and brought up there did my early schooling then i did my engineering uh, it, so this all was happening in around 2000s so definitely at that time uh, there was you know uh, if if i look at career options there were only two if 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 you take maths do your engineering or if uh, i mean that was the that was the kind of you know uh, thought which was very prevailed that okay if you are not good at maths then take bio <laughs> <laughs> so but that was the argument which i used to keep hearing from people uh, definitely it was not right but that's how i did so i took uh, mathematics and then i did my engineering then i started my career in 2005 uh, and it was like typical private jobs which i started doing then i uh, got married in 2008 uh, had my kids so a typical uh, journey of a person doing uh, uh, just you know following what the social economic sector or what you know your parents are expecting or what is happening around Uh, with your friends and just getting shaped up by all those forces uh, and just going on that path uh i think one thing which happened in my journey was like uh, i and my wife we all, always had this feeling that you know uh, there has to be some uh, bigger purpose of life uh, not just uh, earning money and uh, just being on this path of uh, getting married having kids and the all the duties which have to be performed but definitely there has to be different purpose and meaning of life so that that one thing was common uh, between me and my wife and but then we didn't have any answers uh, with covid happening uh, i think that was a time with uh, many of us got a pause uh, we were asked to not go outside we were asked to work remotely and definitely it changed many things and uh, 
there were all there were also many challenges which people were facing outside like in terms of maids were not having any food to eat and all those things so uh, there we uh, just you know took a small step we started helping people around us <clears throat> giving food and groceries and uh, it just so happens that uh, uh, we did a very we took a very small step and then it kept growing bigger and bigger and then we kind of you know started a small initiative uh, uh, long story short so basically last one two years we have been you know doing this uh, grocery distribution uh, with the help of an ngo and uh, it just so happens that if you start doing something good that's what i felt that you know uh, grace or you know good people start coming along with you and then you start learning more and that is how uh, we were uh, fortunate to meet uh, swami ji as well on our journey uh, so uh, this is this is a very short uh, you know how my journey has been uh, now when i look back definitely one thing which sumit also spoke about is social economic uh, structure which is changed so uh, and it is very important uh, because when i look back at my age uh, when i was young uh, there was very i mean the time was very different the structure was very different uh, quick example in terms of right now i am living in a structure where we have flats flat systems uh and you know very little space for us to, for our kids to go outside i'm just giving an example of that uh but when i used to uh, uh in my childhood everything was very different the society was formed in a very different way uh so that is one aspect uh i'm not able to articulate much better but i find it very different uh another example is like uh uh very i mean my father used to work out and then my mom used to be at my home uh, uh right now you know both the uh, uh, uh both is i mean husband and wife they both are working so nothing wrong or right but it's a different thing which has happened uh so that is one one thing which kind of you know uh, is a base for the challenges which you know which i'll i'll be sharing so one thing uh, is with respect to uh, you know how to work with kids uh, with these differences also in factor because at at my age things were very different things were very natural i would say uh, or at least it appeared to be for me uh, uh, with respect to my parents my teachers uh, the friend circle with which i used to play so at least i used to feel very natural thing and you know everybody kind of you know supported and uh, uh i don't remember that you know we used to have these kind of issues as a child which i see in my kids so uh, uh so how to uh, handle that aspect is something which i find very challenging uh, both i and my wife uh second aspect is like you know since uh, i am at 40 i am looking for a meaning in life and many things which i used to feel important when i started my career have now changed so as sumit was also saying like you know what uh, the importance of you know for example money or he was talking about the definition of party for example right so uh, definitely i and my wife are going through a phase where many of these things are changing and when uh, we speak to our kids what what should we tell them because uh, for them for their friends uh for example birthday party is like you know you go out and uh, splurge money right uh and i also uh, almost get an urge to tell them that no okay we will go to some different place i'm just giving an example of birthday party so let's go to an orphanage and spend time right so there i find some sort of you know contradiction as well like right? because i and my wife we are trying to do something else but the children are not just experiencing us but they are experiencing this difference in society as well where you know you have they have friends at their uh, in the neighborhood or their school and they are taking them in a different direction so uh, with these two things one the social economic structure changing second uh, because of our own uh, uh, desire for a different meaning in life and changing these definitions seeing a contradiction this is the second thing uh, because of these two factors uh it becomes very difficult to handle uh, kids their uh, emotional uh, well being and physical well being as well and how to guide them what values to give them and how to communicate to them and uh, so that is one challenge and uh, uh, which you know i have also been discussing with swami ji as well offline 
but definitely given this platform i would all like to you know present uh and get views from swamiji and others and what kind of support system we can have for that uh second aspect i would like to just you know uh, quickly touch upon is uh parents as well uh in terms of uh uh for them it's a complete change in everything because uh, they like you know my parents were born in 1950s so they have changed drastic uh they, have, they they are experiencing a drastic drastic shift in many things technology uh okay. in terms of you know economics the society fabric itself so uh they are in a very dilemma i mean uh, the conversations which typically we have at our home also so uh, many times uh, of them i find not relevant or uh, not helping uh, for me or for my kids but at the same time uh, they have a lot of wisdom as well so how to find that right balance and how to have meaningful conversations with them uh, how to take care of them both physically and mentally that is one aspect which in these times i find very difficult to handle and and finally of course as an individual uh that is the third thing which uh, i think uh, i need support and find very challenging uh i also started as i said i started uh, working you know in this uh, helping people and then i made a cha change in my career as well so as sumit is working for uh, ngo i also started uh, i and my wife also started working with ngo so uh working with ngo definitely uh, is uh, not very <clears throat> uh from a remuneration perspective uh, the compensation is not very uh, good uh, and then uh, all these facilities are also not very good as we talk compared with corporate sector uh, this my if i take my example my friend circuit has completely changed uh, so from there also i feel sometimes pressure in terms of whether uh, i and my wife we are doing the right thing or not because uh, all my friend uh i don't find ground i mean common ground earlier i used to find common grounds to talk to them uh, have a network with them and connect with them but now everything is changing so that gives i mean while it is good and satisfying but on the same hand it gives me some sort of discomfort and nervousness as well uh some sort of fear as well that you know whether this is the right path to continue so this is all from my side uh Uh, which i wanted to share and you know take your help swami ji on this platform namo narayan namo narayan thank you so much ankit thank you so much i mean it has been really very uh, nice to hear both of you and uh, we amongst both of you we have been able to uh, cover almost the entire gamut of experiences and challenges which encompass the grihastha ashrama starting with materialistic aspirations goals in life improvement a purpose in life the social conflicts the requirement to marry and create and be a contributing member to the society not only economically but also through human resources and then uh, if we are parents how can we actually create a better uh, individual who can be contributing to the society how do we balance the change which is taking place i think that has been a very uh, beautiful range of uh, issues which have been placed and uh, let us try and address these issues one by one but before that one thing which we need to understand is life is a journey and this journey is a stage of evolution this evolution takes place within this life also but it also takes place beyond the lives also so when we are looking at life per se we have to try and look at it from both these perspectives one is the body in which we are manifested 
and the other is the soul who resides in this body there is a evolution of the body and there is a evolution of the soul if we neglect either one of them we will be left with a sense of dissatisfaction the various desires which are within <laughs> us are put in place by nature so that we can move ahead in life if there are no desires there will be no progress on the other hand if the desires run amok then again there is no progress we keep getting stuck in a rut like in all things in life we need to find that golden mean the balance wherein we can make use of these desires and also place attention and focus on the larger perspective the journey of the soul and it is with this in mind that yoga has devised a range of activities yoga and ancient indian civilizational systems because if you look at it all the concepts of yoga are incorporated embedded deeply in all the ancient indian systems but before we go into that we need to understand what are our basic driving forces there are four basic instincts we have ahar nidra bhay maithun diet rest fear and the desire to be many these are the four basic instincts which are present in all and these drive us and as our journey of this driving and this propulsion we have what are the shad vikaras kama krodh lobh moh mad matsar these are the six emotions which drive us काम इज कामना डिजायर क्रोध इज एंगर लोभ इज ग्रीड मोह इज इन्फेचुएशन मद इज हेरोगंस एंड मत्सर इज जेलसी वी विल सी दैट ऑल इमोशंस स्प्रिंग फ्रॉम दीज swami ji used to say that these are the six engines which drive our aircraft in today's aircrafts there are two engine dual engine so if one engine fails another takes over but in the aircraft of our life there are these six engines which propel us <coughs> because i have some desire so i work like what you said the materialistic aspirations they are they are necessary if i don't work i don't have food i don't have clothes i don't have a place to stay how can i achieve anything so that is essential and this way the gamut of emotions but if there is a driver to the engine if there is a propulsion if there is movement then there also has got to be a goal a direction if there is no goal no direction then in that case what will happen we will fly aimlessly like a kite whose string has been cut it drifts aimlessly from here to there depending on how the wind blows it and lands somewhere 
so then what are the aims of life there are four they are known as the purusharthas and they are dharma artha kama moksha dharma means knowing one's attributes the dharma of fire is to burn the dharma of wind is to blow and to dry we have to understand dharma in that context not in the religious context earth resources we need to have resources without resources nothing is possible all the desires which we spoke of to fulfill those desires we need resources and once you have accumulated the resources you have the various desires and you are fulfilling those desires is that the end of life no they say there is a fourth moksha transcendence you have to find something beyond that that which is beyond i was pleasantly surprised to hear from sumit as well as ankit time and again the point of focus goal purpose of life in olden days the focus and purpose of life a lofty question like that was left for old age bude ho jayenge tab sochenge but our generation thinks what is the whole point of trying to know the focus of life when you have already lived life better to know about it now which is a very big thing so what is the goal of life the ultimate goal of life before we know the ultimate goal of life we need to know who am i i at the moment i identify myself with the body with the mind with the emotions with my social identity which i have created but is my existence that limited to that or beyond that too when we live life we have lots of desires and we try and fulfill all these desires then initially we are very happy oh i have got my mercedes i have got a big bungalow i have got the best uh, spouse i have got beautiful kids i have got a good name fame respect etc we are happy but then that happiness soon turns into misery and i want something more and something more and something more and something different we are not satisfied because there is something more to life than just this we have not come on planet earth as an accident we are not a product of a biological accident the body is that but within the body there is something which has a longer span and direction until and unless we don't also take into consideration the goal of that subtle principle within ourselves there is no hope for satisfaction that connecting to the goal of that subtle principle is moksha transcendence from these when we were young we found great joy in playing with dolls or with sand castles or whatever but one year later those dolls those toys they are all discarded we no longer have any interest in them 
we have interested in something else. In the same manner, all what is here needs to be transcended. And when we transcend that, then we connect to a higher reality. The goal of life is to be able to connect and experience that higher reality. Many civilizations even doubt the existence of something beyond the body. They say the body exists and that is it. But our civilization, Yoga, Vedanta, speak of a higher reality. And it is the awareness of this higher reality which drives us, makes us restless. There is a story of a king. He was very handsome, very capable, and he used to enjoy the pleasures of youth, as they say. Suddenly, he was cursed into premature old age, and everything that he was craving for went away. So, his mentor, when he, the mentor, this king approached the mentor, the mentor said that, look, you have been cursed with old age. The only thing I can do for you is, if somebody else is able to, and ready to give up their youth for you and take your old age, I can do that transfer for you. You approach your sons. Anybody is ready, he, you can do that. One of his sons was a wise fellow and he said, yes, I am ready. The king got the youth back and enjoyed, went to all the uh, apsaras and uh, everything. But still, at one point, he suddenly felt, oh, there is something more to this. There is no end to this, but I need to do something different. And when that arose in him, he came back and transferred his youth back from his uh, son that transferred and he started pondering on the higher aspects of life. So that is the concept of moksha. And in Grastha Ashrama, we need to work with artha and kama. Dharma, we are supposed to have worked in Brahmacharya Ashram. And when we work with artha and kama, then we need to know why we are doing what we are doing. Sumit had raised a beautiful question. A question which uh, is present now in all areas. Why marry? 50 years ago, marriage was essential if you wanted to have the pleasures, but now that is no longer the need. That's what he has mentioned by the living relationships, etc. So then in that situation, why marry? There are three, four aspects to this. First aspect is it allows you to work out your karmas. Your spouse becomes, the, you project your uh, personality on the spouse and that comes back to you and you are able to work it out. I cannot close my eyes and reflect upon myself. So what do I do? I take a mirror and observe myself on one level. This evolution takes place when you marry, then automatically, unconsciously, that projection starts happening. Mm -hmm. And that way, we start evolving as a person, as an individual, and also as a unit. Second, marriage is 
द बेसिक यूनिट ऑफ सोसाइटी वी हैव सीन दैट ह्यूमन्स आर नॉट इंडिविजुअल्स ह्यूमन्स आर सोशल क्रीचर्स एंड वेन वी आर सोशल क्रीचर्स देन देर हैव टू बी सम रूल्स विच हैव टू बी ब्रॉट इन एंड वेन देर आर दीज रूल्स देन देर हैज टू बी a proper management of these rules when we come in life we do not know about any of these we need to learn family is the basic unit where these values can be inculcated these values are also known as the samskaras samskaras are those principles inculcated within us by which we can face life when shri ram was presented with a challenge he was told that you will be the crown prince and the next day early morning when he was to be anointed as a crown prince he was called and he was told no you are banished out you go into the forest what was his response what was his reaction that response that reaction comes from the upbringing did he went out his frustration and anger because i am sure everybody can relate to how joyful how happy and how proud he would have been feeling and from the top of that suddenly to go to the bottom where you are being kicked out publicly thrown away such a fall of fall from grace humiliation but he respond he responded by first your word is final to me and more importantly from this challenge he created an opportunity this he was able to do only because his upbringing taught him that not to vent your frustrations your anger but to channelize them and look for what is appropriate to be done not just what i want to do so when you look at what is appropriate to be done shri ram decided he has to walk away and if he is walking away how can he make the best of it there is a terrorist ravana i as a king cannot take care of that i use this opportunity to kill this terrorist so he made a challenge and converted it into an opportunity an opportunity not of the lifetime but of centuries even today we remember him for the decisions he has taken that is how we can convert but to be able to do that we need to provide proper samskaras and upbringings this brings us to the next question which was raised the social aspirations the social ladder the social structures in every society there is a structure which is created either by design or by default which helps most people move in a certain manner generally it helps people evolve and manage their problems however when there are turns on that journey of the society then there is a transition which comes in where the direction which was set earlier no longer is the path because i was told i have to keep going straight 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 but now since i am at crossroads 
I can't go straight. I have to go either left or right. So I get pulled by different options. <laughs> that is the way society also evolves. We have to make that choice for ourselves. Given my set of thoughts, given my desires, my status in life, and my goals and ambitions, I need to decide what path I have to take. As an individual of the society who is a contributing member, like a, the Gruhastha Ashrama, then here we have certain responsibilities which come up. As both of you mentioned, the need to have a good house, the need to have appropriate resources and all. <clears throat> there. Along with this, one error which many people do, which I feel is very essential to point out, is we do not want any difficulties to befall our children. I have undergone so many difficulties. I want the life of my children to be very nice and happy. When you are thinking that, then please remember you are plotting the downfall of your child. You have progressed in life because of the difficulties you faced. The difficulties which we face help us grow. If there are no difficulties, growth will not take place. And when there are no difficulties outside, difficulties start coming up inside. That is what we are seeing in children today. Everything is hunky-dory for them. All the material pleasures are already available. What growth can take place in such situations? Not much. And nature has internalized. Today, children are having nervous breakdowns. They are having anxiety attacks. They are having crisis after crisis. Why? Partly because there is no external pressure which is forcing them to go in a specific direction. <clears throat> so therefore, when we are looking at upbringing, then we should look at not removing the difficulties, but providing solutions to the difficulties. <clears throat> Dasharath and Kausalya did not tell Ram that you are the son of a king. So uh, you should live in a nice, happy environment, uh, pleasurous environment. No, they sent him to the Gurukul of Vasishtha. And there he had to learn to live with society, with all the people. He learned the social skills. And he also learned what to do and what not to do. And that prepared him for the moment of reckoning. And when the moment of reckoning came, Sri Ram passed that test. And that's why Crown Prince Ram became Sri Ram. He became Prabhu Sri Ram. I am not using the name of Sri Ram as the deity, but as a historical figure from what, from whom we can learn. So it is the duty of our duty, our duty to learn how will our children manage their difficulties. That is the best treasure we can give. If my situation allows me, then I will also provide material benefits to the child. Nothing wrong in it. We don't have to invent zero all the time. Progress happens when the next generation stands on my shoulder and moves ahead. But when they stand on my shoulder, they also need to know that when they have to move ahead, they have to use their hands. They cannot use my hands. So their hands have to be strong enough for that. Family is 
the arena where we can train our children to face the trials and tribulations of life and take them as stepping stones to success i can make a obstacle as a stepping stone only if my hands my feet my body my mind is strong enough otherwise it will crush me so preparing children for their trials and tribulations is what is essential another thing is we have to remember that the trials and tribulations of each person is different our children we our parents they have got a genetic linkage and based on that they also have a social linkage and based on that we will have difficulties and uh, uh, conveniences but each and every individual is unique and different each individual comes with his source of karmas and those karmas they are going to manifest differently if i have made 100 debit transactions those debit transactions are going to come and haunt me no matter where i am i need to learn how to manage those debit transactions i need to learn how to manage my transactions so the next aspect of upbringing is to be able to train children to face difficulties to recognize them and when we do that then we have succeeded in providing our children a good launching pad for their lives materially to whatever extent but more importantly by providing them values based on which they can progress in life yoga provides means by which we can work towards this each person has hardships difficulties another aspect is our aging parents they have lived in times which have gone by their mindset is set in those times for them it is very difficult as ankit pointed out it is very difficult for them to adjust to the changing times some of us are able to some of us are not able to and it is our duty to be able to also support parents in their individual journey when we look at the two journeys which we have to take the journey of this life and the journey beyond this life then we understand that as we move from grahasthashram into vanaprastha the goals shift the goals become more global and gradually internalized so we need to help our parents understand this in olden times this was the norm people knew it nobody had to teach them because that knowledge was you know all over everybody knew about it and that is how society was last 50 years society is in a state of flux is what we need to understand and we need to explore so these are the difficulties which come in how can yoga help yoga helps by preparing your mind all these problems are the problems of the mind and when our mind is capable then it can bring out the solutions there are no easy solutions what will work for you will not work for me and therefore we need to look for principles mm. not quick fix solutions what is the pr principle which yoga speaks of 
Yoga speaks of the harmony between the head, the heart and the hand. Manasa, Vacha, Karmana. And when we have this harmony, then we are able to move ahead. When there is disharmony, then immediately we have to step back and observe what is happening. Understand where that disharmony stems from and work towards clearing that. That is the process of yoga and this is the goal of yoga. By doing this, we can make a change in our lives. We can improve ourselves, we can give, we can widen our perspective so that we can have the golden mean at all times. Material aspirations, spiritual aspirations. One other is insufficient. Bhuke pet bhajana na hoi gopala. You know, a chip on an empty stomach. So it is essential that we need to have food. But if we are running only after food, then we have missed the bus. So we need to have both together. And we need to have that blending, the harmony between these two. Finding this out step by step is the way we can progress. Purpose in life, ultimate purpose is moksha, transcendence from this vicious circle. But we cannot jump to PhD when we are in kindergarten. We have passed through primary school, middle school, high school, college. Grahasthashram allows us to work through primary school, middle school, high school and college. So Grahasthashram is the time when we can face this challenges, use yogic practices to bolster our inner st strength so that the shocks which come can be converted into solutions. And doing so, we are able to slowly work out those desires which are there within us. Mm. There is a strong impulse. And when that strong impulse is there, intellect does not work. When I am very, very hungry, I haven't eaten for one week and then I see a fruit in front of me. My mind says that please don't touch that fruit. That fruit is poisonous. But I am so hungry that I disregard that voice of reason. Pick up the fruit and eat it because it sounds, it smells delicious. And then we suffer. So yoga allows us to Increase that strength of voice of reason. Balance this and work it out step by step so that we gradually move from a state where we are driven by these impulses aimlessly to a point where slowly the aim of the movement becomes clear and then we start moving in that direction. And as we move in that direction, we work on a social level. We work on a professional level, we work on a family level, we work on an individual level and we work on an internal level. Mm. All these five, bringing a balance between these five is the challenge of Grahasthashram. And how can we begin mm. ourselves for this challenge? The simplest way is to start with a regular practice mm. of yoga does not matter you what practices you begin with. Make a beginning. Mm. Once a week, twice a week, twice a week, every day, whatever mm. twice. Start practicing yoga, some, mm. ask, some pranayam, some meditative practice and mm. the yoga of the heart. Serve, love, give. You don't have to do too much. 
but just a little reaching out to those who are in pain sorrow suffering and when you do that in addition to what you are doing you will see there is an internal growth which mm. if this internal growth does not come up then all the good activities which we do and finally lead to frustration because the internal desires have not been fulfilled have not been worked out through this is what we need to work through that is essential we can't suppress our desires we need to transcend them we need to harness them how to do that start with some yogic practices do swadhyay and step by step we will be able to understand this in greater details keeping in mind that we need to maintain balance amongst all the dimensions do not tilt too much to one direction or the other maintain empathy compassion and then we are able to make the best of the grihastha ashrama we are all in. Mm-hmm. so that is what yoga has to offer to us now if there are any questions which you would like to ask ask we can spend some time on the panel discussion either you can ask the question unmute yourself and ask the question or put them into the chat box there is a question in the chat box parent so understand their duties in the modern era uh, i did not understand that can you elaborate namo narayan swami ji yeah uh, i want you were telling about that uh, parents should understand their both i wanted to say that when parents are uh, telling their uh, children or, or whatever they want to tell that time children also should be receptive and they also should understand and parents also should understand their problems both should understand each other's sure. problem and yes i agree fully to that i agree fully to that uh in today's times children are made to feel that they know everything they are the best of them all and when that feeling comes in children they feel that they know everything and when they know everything then they are no longer receptive to learning new things that is one thing which uh parents need to be uh alert about and on the other hand parents also should be alert and aware that they do not uh transfer their frustrations or their anger to the children because children are very pliable very vulnerable and very open so uh, if that happens you are creating more difficulties for children rather than helping so as a responsible parent it is very essential for us to work our problems ourselves and not transmit them to our children because then we are just increasing the confusion of children 
so this is a very important thing for which parents need to keep time to themselves but at the same time it is very essential that when we are training children children should be brought up with the knowledge that there is a external authority which is stronger than them which is not stronger physically but which is higher than them because if children are brought up with the thought that there is no authority if parents and children are friends then they are not going to be receptive to the parents so therefore we have to remember that we have to be friend philosopher and guide to our children not just friend if we are only friends with our children they will also treat us as friends and amongst friends we know everything so there is nothing more but we are also our duty is to be a philosopher and guide so for that we need to prepare ourselves that we become like a philosopher and a guide and we ensure that the children also know this so this is a very fine line which has to be drawn but it is essential for the growth of children thank you swami ji swami ji yes i i see sometimes and i have seen it before also like 20 30 years ago that many adults feel sandwiched between the demands of the parents and the demands of children they themselves did not have much of a life or le less they could do less for themselves because they were constantly pulled either to do something for the parents or do something for the children what is your uh, solution to this or guidance about this we need to know that there are three aspects here one is my responsibility to my parents one is my responsibility to my children and the third is my responsibility to myself my partner my job my society and we need to have a balance between the three if we have too much of one and too much of the other like you rightly said you feel sandwiched it, certainly it is essential that you need to pay attention to your parents but then parents grandparents let us call them grandparents also know that their role now is no longer the role of a grihastha ashrami but it is that of a vanaprasthi so uh, it is essential that grandparents know they are in vanaprastha ashram parents know they are in grihastha ashram and children know they are in brahmacharya ashram 20 years ago the same person who is in grihastha ashram and a person who is now in vanaprast they were one step below let us say the vanaprast was in grihastha ashram and grihastha ashram was in brahmacharya ashram and the same mindset continues when we are moving out they need to transition out and these need to transition in into taking responsibility and delineating the priority the requirements i need to work as per the desires of my parents but i also by a age need to know what is the requirement of the times today not of the times yesterday hamare zamane mein aise hota tha yes so now i need to sift through aapke zamane mein aise hota tha uske piche kya kya karan the aaj ki paristhiti mein kya kya hai uske piche uddesh kya tha aaj ke paristhiti mein us uddesh ko hum kis prakar se purna kar sakte hain and then we need to be able to grow in our strength to be able to explain to our parents and to our children what is needed when there is this balance then the generation in between feels healthy otherwise they will feel sandwiched because always that generation in between is a sandwich between the two one before and one after depending on who is stronger either they exert undue ex uh, influence on the other generations or they are overwhelmed by the other generations our ability has to be to maintain that balance 
and for that all the three generations need to be in sync with each other relationship can happen only when all the parties in the relationship are able to work in harmony this is a chain and in this chain every bead has a role if this bead wants to be in this place it's not going to work then the chain breaks this bead has to be in this place this bead has to be in this place and these are in this place that is essential so once we know what are my duties what is the role i have to play then we can find out how to answer the question and for that we need to practice there is a question how does asan pranayam practice help in dealing with conflicts in the mind or emotions of fear and anger beautiful question the conflicts come up because there is a desire to do something and there is a compulsion to do something quite opposite so we are oscillating to do this or to do that to do this or to do that and that is where we get stuck emotions fear and anger come up when i have to do one and i am afraid that something else will happen anger comes up when i want to do something else but it's not going my way and there is a rage which comes up all of these in the body manifest through hormones and neurotransmitters when we perform asanas and pranayam we are working on those centers in the brain which modulate hormones which modulate the autonomic nervous system the sympathetic and parasympathetic and we modulate the functioning of the nerves the brain itself by bringing in a balance between these centers we are able to deal with these conflicts pranayam what does ha what happens in pranayam you are very consciously breathing in a specific pattern the manifestation is out here but the impulse originates in here and when i modulate the movement of my respiratory centers that has an impact on other centers which are very closely connected and when that happens it has an impact on the hypothalamus which in turn has the impact on the entire neuro hormonal axis so when you perform asans when you perform pranayam you are working on these centers in the brain and these centers when they are in balance with each other then there is the dawn of a third understanding when they are not in balance with each other the understanding doesn't dawn so on a very basic fundamental level this is the role which asan pranayam play in dealing with the conflicts simplest example is that of abdominal breathing you just do abdominal breathing deep abdominal breathing and you will see that the anger the fear comes down you sit down and uh, go in shashank asan in 7 to 10 minutes you will see that the emotional rampage which is going on calms down how does it happen it happens by the physiological basis which i just spoke about that is the basis of the efficacy and effectiveness of yogic practices i feel most of us keep engaged throughout life 
in basic needs as per need hierarchy theory and don't move forward to self realization yes that does happen if we are not aware of it sometimes the situations are so overwhelming that we cannot spend time to sit down and ponder over these questions for this purpose we have very uh, innovative methods which sages saints and scriptures came up with they said that whatever you are doing convert that into your sadhana bring in the component of awareness so if i am stuck with uh the basic needs of life i do that i don't run away from it but i bring in the concept of awareness i am aware i am doing this in the same way as i say i am breathing and i am aware i am breathing this awareness is the seed and that seed when we plant in our lives it grows and allows us to become aware of the other things in life and eventually even if the physical circumstances are not so conducive just the concept of awareness starts changing our response to them and allows us to progress in life so i believe that no matter whichever situation we are in if we become aware and start with that one basic thing it will make a lot of difference and uh there are many who will not because perhaps their time has not yet come when the time comes for them they get restless they will start searching for answers and most of us are searching for answers just that we don't know about them simplest thing which everybody can do whatever be my situation just do whatever i have to do with awareness what is my duty what is appropriate for me to do my understanding of appropriateness will slowly increase and my understanding will increase and automatically my responses will also change that way maintaining the situation we can make a change in our life kindly throw light on the confrontations in grahastha ashram life especially difference in the thinking patterns and priorities confrontation is one of the biggest challenge in life and the beauty has to be to convert this confrontation into cooperation and to do that first thing what we need to try and do is we feel that we, when there is a confrontation we are in confrontation with something remove us from the picture and say this situation is in confrontation with this situation situation a is in confrontation with situation b it is not that i am in confrontation with you when that mindset changes if the husband and wife are in confrontation with each other then don't say that i am in confrontation with you this view point of mine is in confrontation with this view point of yours so we have first and foremost delineated ourselves from that and then we can say okay if this is the case let us start analyzing and when this discussion begins then automatically different thoughts emotions everything come up because my viewpoint is created by as a sum total of all the different experiences i have experienced in the past they are radically different than your experiences so therefore my viewpoint is bound to be different than your viewpoint if i identify with my viewpoint as my viewpoint then any change which i have to do in that is 
a defeat for me and my ego will not allow that to happen but instead if i say this is the viewpoint which is present and that is the other viewpoint which is present now let us discuss why this has happened then we can come to a conclusion but for this both the partners need to have that degree of understanding and to be able to make this delineation we need to practice yoga asan pranayam in themselves will not solve the problems but they provide us with tools to solve them so that is how we have to start making a change in our lives uh samjha i have a question uh huh so uh when you were speaking you mentioned about uh, artha and kama and how in grahasra grahasra ashrama we have to basically follow this path and you know provide resources uh, but my question is how to you know identify uh, that this is something that i really need that is my basic need and uh, which is which is not basically or, or you also talked about uh, you know the importance of social structure or social norms but in today's society when everybody is everything is kind of you know getting uh, all the needs or so per se needs are getting formed by you know social media or advertisements or you know i have little very little say in what i really want i see 10 15 ads every day on pause yes you cannot say that i don't have a say mm-hmm. i choose not to have a say right uh I- yes yes i mean it is difficult for me to have a say with current mindset of current uh, you know consciousness yeah, because we are our, allowing ourselves to be swayed by everybody else right to strong versus okay. we will be swayed by anybody and everybody else if we do not have a string anchoring hmm. us to a different uh, to a specific location hmm, hmm. so first we need to bring that string in our life what is our anchor we need to identify our anchor my situation in life is that i don't care whatever happens i need to have the best vehicle hmm if that doesn't work i just cannot exist that means that is the highest priority in my life and to get that best vehicle i need to make certain compromises i am ready for that so in that situation go for it and be ready for the compromises you have to make but sometimes i come into a situation that well i would like to have a car doesn't have to be the best car but i need to have something else in life very important i would like to give you an example of the cricketing legend sachin tendulkar he had said when he was asked the question how did you practice did you not feel like going out with your friends and having a good time he said yes of course i like vada pav i guess like most mumbai kars they love vada pav he said i like vada pav but when my friends used to say come let's go and have some vada pav i would feel rather let me practice this because i want to become a better cricketer that pull is different in different people because he had that pull and that was his focus he was able to achieve something many of us oh yeah i would like to play, play cricket but i would also like to have vada pav mm. and i want something here and something there so my energy is distributed i am not be, going to be able to move further in life if you want to be anything in life you need to have to give away many things we have to choose what is important for us and what is not important for us and when we are to make a compromise what is the cost of that compromise once we are clear in our mind doesn't matter if i don't get vada pav i must practice because i want to become the best cricketer then the pull of the vada pav is less but if the vada pav is pulling me too much then i have to compromise on being the best cricketer 
So this compromise we have to make and we have to learn to live with those compromises. And the beauty of life is that it always throws us options to improve ourselves. Now, the ways will be different, but that option is always there. So if social media is providing 100 different options, I, if my focus is clear, then I am swayed by them. Or if I am swayed by them, I will observe what is useful for me and take myself ahead. Hmm. But this focus is not so easy. The distraction, I know I need to focus and get good marks. But my instincts pull me in different directions. And I am not able to exert that willpower because my Ichha Shakti is less. That is where practices of yoga come to allow us to improve our Ichha Shakti, our Kriya Shakti, our Jnana Shakti. And then we are able to reach the goal of our lives. That is where yoga comes. Thank you so much. I mean the difference amongst members, parents, ourselves and children among parents. So I think this is confrontation. Yeah. So uh, I think what I had mentioned earlier, if we are able to be linked my viewpoint and this is a viewpoint, then we can actually discuss it in a neutral manner because when we are discussing in that manner, then whatever be the outcome which comes, my identity is not shaken by that. In fact, my identity gets bolstered that look, I have been able to come to a proper conclusion. This is something which takes effort and uh, concerted and coordinated effort from all parts of the family. If the children don't have that, it will not work. If the parents don't have, it will not work. If the grandparents don't have, it will not work. So we have to have it in all the three. We start with one and gradually we have to increase our ability that we influence others, not they influence us. Like what uh, Sumit was speaking about social in media and the influencers. We have to become an influencer, not just an influency. When we do that, then the confrontation becomes a opportunity for conference, not confrontation. And in the conference, we can discuss points and come to a best conclusion. That is where the skills come in. So it is already beyond nine o'clock. Let us complete. If you have other questions, you can always share it in the WhatsApp group. Those of you who are new members, if you would like to join in, kindly share your email and WhatsApp numbers so that then we can share the recording with you. And also uh, we can uh, communicate if you want to take things further. Please close your eyes. Hands on your knees in Dhyana or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Bring your awareness to your eyebrow center, blue madhya. Bring back the same image we had chosen in the beginning and maintaining awareness on this. Let us chant the mantra Om three times together. Taking in a deep breath. Oh. Oh. 
Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma mrutam gamaya, sarvesham swasti bhavatu, sarvesham shantir bhavatu, sarvesham purnam bhavatu, sarvesham mangalam bhavatu, Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Om triambakam yajamahe Sugandhim pushti vardhanam Purvarukam ibabandhanam Mrityor mukshiyam amrutat Om shanti 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 hi And Sint Pranam Mudra Tvameva mata cha pita tvameva, tvameva bandhus cha sakha tvameva, tvameva vidya dravinam tvameva, tvameva sarvam mama deva deva, tvameva sarvam mama deva deva, tvameva sarvam Mama Deva Deva Hari Hi Om Hari Om Tat Sat Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. And when the palms cool down a bit, then gently move your palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om Tat Sat Namo Narayan Jai Namo Narayan Swamiji Namo Narayan Namo Narayan Swamiji Namo Narayan Namo Narayan Swamiji Namo Narayan Namo Narayan